emotional injuries of your father and the emotional injuries of your mother were very different from each other. You follow me? They were very different from each other, the emotional injuries between the father and the mother. And the emotional injuries that they had played out with all of your children in different ways. The firstborn child, which I gather is Peter, is the child generally that they focus all of their attention on initially because he's the only one born, he's the only one present. And the firstborn child in a, in a situation like your family's becomes responsible for the parents' emotions. So the firstborn child learns to parent the parents. Do you follow me? Now it's very damaging for Peter to have had this happen to him because now he can't connect to his own emotions very well, which he will freely admit. So, but the firstborn child often gets this projection from parents that, that, that you are responsible for all of our emotions. Now because Peter was a male, the firstborn child was a male, your father had no emotional injuries that could play out with Peter so much. And your father didn't have any feelings of competition towards Peter. Right? If he did, Peter would be in a totally different situation than he is now. Then I, I believe, who was the next born? Philip. Philip was the next. And when Philip was born, he was born on your mother's birthday. It's a very key point that you raise because your mother is, by this stage, your mother has dealt with years of abuse from her husband. Okay? So what is she feeling towards men now? So when, when Peter was born, she, she, there was less abuse that she'd experienced than by the time Peter's brother was born, Philip was born. And on top of that, this male child was born on her special day. The day when she got the focus of attention. And now, like now she no longer gets the focus of attention on that day, and who takes away the focus of attention? A man, a male. So now she's got lots of projections of emotions at her son, her second son. Not the first son, because he never took away that. Does that make sense? And by this stage, she's so sick and tired of coming home and getting raped, or him coming home and raping her, I'm talking about your dad with your mother, that she's now trying to detune from men altogether. Right? So Peter at least received some emotions from mum that were good. But by the time Philip comes along, what's happening now? There's very, very few projections of emotions going at Philip that are any good, that are approving of him being a male. But your father's emotions yet haven't had the chance to play out. You were born and you're a girl. Your father has huge incestual type feelings towards women. He, he, is constant, he was constantly flirtatious when he was married. He had no concern for a woman's needs or, or feelings about a woman's wants or desires. And on top of that, he was abusive towards your mother and often raped her. So now, now your mother, and this is a problem you face, your mother is sick to death of being raped by her husband. She feels she needs to stay in the relationship. She's sick to death of her second child because he's taken away any semblance of good feelings that she ever had, which was on a birthday. Now you come along and now you're an opportunity. You're an opportunity to substitute her in your relationship with your father. So I'm just being, I'm being frank about their situation. So she chose, and your father chose, you as the surrogate sexual partner. So, and I feel so, so sad, but it's occurring to me. Um, so you received so much abuse and so much lack of protection from both parents. And so your issues are primarily with both parents, of course. And there's this terrible rage in you, uh, of course, which is understandable. And, and can you see how now not only were those things all different, but now the personalities of each of your children were different too. They were all different because God created all different personalities in every soul. So how you responded to this abuse became very, very different. Your brother became rageful. He became resentful of his older brother and he became rageful towards your mother. He became resentful of his older brother because his older brother was the only one that seemed to have any type of relationship with his mother. You 
follow me? So now he feels resentful towards Peter. He feels resentful towards his mother because his mother doesn't give him the love that he really wants. And he is now, and I've met your brother, obviously, and he's now in a terrible rage as a result of that. Then you come along and you receive the worst of everything in the sense that your mother now wants to substitute you as your father's sexual partner. And she doesn't care that that's happening to you. And your father, and your father doesn't care either. And that's why you've experienced the terrible experiences that you've experienced at their hands. And then of course there was these events, because of this, because of the law of attraction, because of this, you were then kidnapped when you were three years of age, you were abused and sexually assaulted by the man at the, uh, at the race course where I appeared to you. You were the only one my whole life that I saw love. Yes. The only one. Well, the truth is there was no one else around you that had any love. And so, um, The man, was, the man who was assaulting her was going to murder her. So, so when, when I appeared, he was frightened and he left. And, and Jen was managed to escape. And the sad thing was that when she escaped and went back to her family, her father said he didn't want to do anything about it. So it just added to the abuse. So Jen's had a very difficult um, life and, and this is the reason why the family dynamics are there because the previous generation of both, fam both sides of the family, your mothers and your fathers, did some major damage to their own children in a similar fashion. And that's why you've got great-grandfathers, grandfather, father, all having very, very similar emotional injuries. And you've got great grandmother, mother, mother, you know, great grandmother, mother, all having similar emotional injuries. But it does a terrible, devastating, uh, terribly devastating thing to um, to you. And this is where often we need courage, just and just this connection to God to get just through all of those events. But every single thing that these parents have done, and the grandparents have done, and the great parents have done there is a law of compensation effect upon them. And they will need to go through this process of clearing through all of their emotions. And they can do it just like you can. They can do it with God. And the faster they do it, the better off it is now going to be for you. But the good thing, Jen, for you, is that you're not waiting for that. And, and one good thing about your personality is you don't wait around for anyone. <laughs> And that's a beautiful thing. And it's what's allowing you now to process these emotions and work your way through them. So it's so good that you have the desire to do that. So many of you, like I've related just a little bit of Jen's background, which probably many of you weren't aware of. Um, and you get an idea of what happens in a family with multi-generational issues and problems. And, and the key with all of this is just if we can deal with our emotions now, we can get through all of this, with God's help we can get through all of this, and in the end come out the other side, and that damage will not be perpetuated anymore. And so, my feelings are that if you have the courage to face your own emotional injuries, and you have the courage to step your way through them, and you have the courage to connect with God through that process, then you will come out this other side in a very beautiful state, feeling n you'll remember these events, but you won't have any emotional signature to them anymore in your life. They will no longer affect your law of attraction. They will no longer affect your life. You will be in a state of bliss that you can experience if you have the courage to work your way through these emotions. And so my suggestion is to do what Jen's doing, have the courage to 
work your way through them.